Well, it's really strange, God. We're sitting here about seven years since the last, when you first done a, a film in here. And I remember it very well. And I remember at the time um, doing a wee report that we had 70 people through our doors. Well, we've got over 200 now been through our doors since then. I came here in 2013 and uh, it wasn't the, the, the best of circumstances. There was water running down a kitchen wall down at the back there. I was a bit taken aback by the size and the scale of the work because I, I didn't really have much information to go on. So I kind of thought it would just be kind of a small scale social enterprise just doing a wee bit. But when I got to know about the factory and all the kind of other projects that are going on, yeah, I was really surprised about how, how far stretching it is. So I've done all the ceilings in here, upstairs in the, the back there, start most of it redone it again. The local constituency, MSP, have seen this place develop from an empty shell. In fact, an empty shell um, probably doesn't uh, show the devastation of this site when Pat and Open Gates first moved in and it's been transformed. Our STEPS programme, um, and that is, it's a employability course. Some of the people who come out of that course are not quite ready to work, and our goal was to try and get them ready to think about moving into work. And Apex is also known for helping ex-offenders. Um, I think that's kind of where we kind of started initially. I think we started about 30 years ago. And we're kind of initially known for helping ex-offenders, which, which as you imagine um, is something that um, you have got at your heart as well. I think of Open Gates like a, like a wee player. It's not a big player, but it produces big results and it produces big results for people. And what we want to do is maintain that and develop, develop that approach so we're making a big difference for more and more people. This, this place was a ruin basically when you took it on uh, and through your own uh, time investment you've, you've turned it into uh, both somewhere where people can work, uh, there's a cafe, uh, a training facility, uh, so that's what you've achieved so far with, with not very much. Uh, but if you had more influence over this, uh, this building and the space round about it uh, I know you've got plans, um, you could deliver a lot of social benefit for this part of the city and for your clients. I'm really excited about the plans for Open Gates, I, I, I'm really excited about the plans for the area, they all take time, but time's one thing, without the vision, time is pretty useless. So we've got the vision, you've got a vision here for Open Gates, uh, and I think it's a very, very positive outlook in the, in the medium term. I just came back, it reminds me of 10 years ago, I took a photograph just of the spare ground there and uh, we took a photograph of all the state that the factories and the first day I walked into the factory I seen it for what it is just now, I didn't see it the way it was before, it was totally derelict we walked into a passageway, we couldn't get in because the thieves that were stripping the building had it all blocked off, we had to break in so we could see the building so um, there was a, a mountain of work to do that was 10 years ago, so hopefully I can show you around the factory, show you the way it was before and the way it is now. Still no finish, got ah, maybe 20% to go, but we're hoping to do that within the coming months to get that finished. That's our aims and goals. Enterprises like yourself, your heart's in it, so you're just so much more effective in what you do because you actually care about what you're doing. When I was doing my research, even back to stuff in the 60s and 70s, all it was always said that Justice is imposed by those doing and not experiencing. So how can someone making the rules know what the best rules are when they've not been through it themselves? And it just it's just continued through time and it's clear and, and open gates as well. You're so good at it because you've been through it. You know exactly what it's like. Most people know that I'm a Christian in here. Uh, and I really thank the Lord for that because um, in my life, from nine year old to I was 32, I knew of prisons and um, prayer schools, borsals, detention. That's well known. Uh, I, mean, I thank the Lord for that as well because I've not got any academic uh, qualifications, but I've got a, a, a learning and an understanding of what like it is to offend, and I know what like it is to be released. I also understand that I've been conning myself in the respect is that you think you're a bit of a hard man and you think you're respected, but you've got too many victims for that. You don't have any concern about the victims whatsoever. And it wasn't until I became 33 that that changed for me. I got a wee epiphany and my heart totally changed. So I see it from every different point of view. I see it from a view um, of being incarcerated, separated from my family. Um, so much so that even as a young child, being I was nine year old when I went into Lark's Grove the Mantle, um, that I made myself sick. I was so sick with homesickness. I was actually physically. 
a wean away for the family. So I know what they're like, that feels. And I also know the utopia of being released. There's no feeling like it. I'm the advisor for the Community Ownership Support Service, or COS, uh, as they're more, more commonly called. I cover Glasgow and the West Coast. Uh, I got involved with Open Gates maybe almost two years ago, I would guess, when I got a phone call from uh, Anne Souter, who's on the committee, uh, who asked me to come and have a chat to you about the work that I do. So, uh, COS, we work with community groups that are interested in taking on assets, whether it be land or buildings. Uh, so, uh, I think you can do some really positive things. Uh, we, we see groups all over the country that are using the legislation or just using assets to do really positive things for their communities. And uh, you know, you, you guys and the people involved could and should be part of that. So you definitely need a, a long-term lease. And it, it allows you to do th things, um, it allows you to use the space more flexibly, but it also allows you to bring in grants and funding that you couldn't otherwise get. So uh, yeah, it gives you security and it allows you to deliver some things that you want to deliver, I know you want to deliver, uh, but you can't currently because there's no security for you. You're in here now, this is a, this is a showroom. Um, we don't do a lot of business here at all because most of your stuff is sold down at Shop and Partick. But it comes in here and it comes in the, the entrance there and we restore it slightly, we may upgrade it. But the first time I come in here, come in this door, there's a small window to the right hand side. We took 120 tonnes of rubbish out that small white window. When I come in here, there was no walls, no ceilings, no nothing, absolutely nothing in here. It was absolutely soaking because the, the drains had been blocked. So we managed to, over the years, the first couple of years, we managed to get stud partitions put up, suspended ceilings put in, we then re rewired it, re-plumbed it. So this is all the boys at the National Top End and Community Paybacks that we got all this done. So we worked at that for about two or three years. Then I managed to move to a small dingy office downstairs, it was always freezing, to upstairs. And then we could really concentrate on it. It's been a slow, slow process. But as you can see, it's quite neat and tidy and we were actually quite chuffed with this. Um, we have a section next door called the Granny Grove. Um, so that's a place where we put all our old furniture. Now that's hard to sell, but we refuse to throw it out because we rent a lot of that out to TV studios and filmmakers. And they're very good because they buy it and then they use it and then they return it to us, which is great for us. Since I've been involved with Open Gates, there's always been people, people who are here all the time, people who will drop in, and people in the community, uh, the wider community who uh, support Open Gates. I think the foundations have been laid. I think about the individuals that come through here, having come through the justice system, right? Maybe their fault, maybe not their fault, but at the end of the day, they come here, they're marked, they've been uh, been to trial, they've been convicted, and we provide them with something that maybe they wouldn't get if they went elsewhere, and that is a chance to sort of grab some responsibility, take some responsibility, a chance for people like you to trust them, to have confidence in them, a chance for them to build up their skills. Now, if that's successful, and I've seen it being successful in here, then it makes an impact on them. It means that their life for the first time, maybe for some of the, the, the people who come here, the life, their life has got more choices than maybe they thought they had. For the families that they, they're part of, and sometimes they're the breadwinners and sometimes they're the, the youngest child, right? it, it makes a difference as they grow uh, in stature, as they grow in confidence, and for the communities that they come from, it must make a difference. So instead of taking from the communities, sometimes literally, they're actually getting a chance to give back to the communities that they come from. It's exciting. Um, we're going to officially open the cafe today. Um, that is really exciting. It's been a long process and a lot of hard work for a lot of people. And I'm just so thankful for the lot. And what is striking in here is the rent restoration we've done in this building. It's taken us seven years. And I think that in itself is a blessing. Because if we would have got funding at the beginning, then we would have done this in six months. But it meant that the 200 people, volunteers, community payback service, and the National Top End wouldn't have had the chance to come through here. As you know, it's getting called the Cafe Wall. Uh, it's after a dear friend of ours who passed away a couple of years ago. We tend to turn this into a training centre 
not just a nice wee place to come and sit and get a cup of tea. We're hoping to train boys for prisons, for young, young offenders to come in here and learn about catering, learn about serving and all different aspects of this factory. Uh, we'll have painting and restoration work. Haven't we planned seven years ago, eight years ago, this new company fruition? Uh, well, we first came to the factory, this factory being absolutely destroyed and uh, slowly but surely we start, doing, uh, start restoring the building. And build my skills, build my uh, CV and uh, the open gates, they helped me a lot. I've been involved with Open Gates for about three or three and a half years now and I'm involved in, with Open Gates because I can see it makes such a difference to so many people's lives. We see people coming in here, perhaps from community payback orders, sometimes men who come to the end of life sentences and you can see them actually grow their self, their self esteem, their self confidence, their attitude to life and life choices the longer they are in Open Gates. It's, it's been a long journey for Open Gates to get to this stage and, and now today is here, it's such a lovely tribute to a friendship between Pat and Walter, right when Pat started out with Open Gates. Yeah, one of, the, one of four councillors in the local area, uh, actually born here, I'm a Postle boy, I was born in Denmark Street in Postle uh, many, many moons ago now, but uh, so it's a, a great privilege for me to represent the area that, that I'm from and that my family still live in, um, and I know the area very well. Uh, Open Gates was a surprise to me, I, I didn't really know what was going on in here, uh, because you drive by it, you know, day on day, on day. Um, and it was a, a great pleasure and surprise to come in and meet yourself, Pat meet the team, have a look around the scale of this, hear about the project, hear about the very good work that's going on, uh, and immediately think, well, okay, how can I practically help this? How can I practically support this? Um, the council is, is a fairly large landowner. Uh, it's a fairly large uh, enabler for community organisations. So there are things that the council will be interested and able to support Open Gates in doing going forward, and I'm happy to act as that kind of conduit and bridge and advocate uh, for the, the project to make sure that where there's you know, facilities or resources available, well, we want to make our case for, for getting access to those. So there's practical things that we can help with. There's also just bringing a general awareness of the project to other council colleagues and council officers. And I think that will be of benefit to the wider community here, but particularly to Open Gates. Well, this, as you can see, this is the, the, the sewer suite. We first came in here, this was really in a poor, poor state. No ceilings, no walls, no windows. They had metal shutters on the three separate windows, two here and one at the back here. And there was a massive hole in the middle of the floor that was rotten through and through that took us into the paint room. We split that into two, done it a restoration place in a paint room. We done it ourselves, we were quoted, I think, I think it was, um, we were quoted £5,000 to repair it. We done it for £700. Used their own skills and their own boys. We put in new, new timbers and we done that. So we brought it up to this standard which this is really, and it's ready to be upgraded again. There's another outside film, uh, Tell the Investments. They back us. You can see that that's their pictures and some of the stuff that we get from them. So that's here. There's a private kitchen here, a small kitchen. And that's basically for people that can't afford a meal downstairs. They can just make their own, you know, their own uh, teas and coffees. Open Gates is the, is the enthusiasm of the people that you've brought in whether it's your um, volunteers or the people who you've brought in from National Top End, uh, the spirit and uh, the, the kind of uh, atmosphere here has always been very, very welcoming and also one where I feel that people should be safe and comfortable with what's going on uh, with your, with your charitable uh, works. Um, we've been through a few things with trying to get... Uh, funding we've been through a few things of trying to get people on side we've been able to try and set a board up so i think the journey as i said earlier was the progress of the small steps uh, has really accumulated and now you've got commercial activity going on here and you've got your your kind of click and collect um to to the local glasgow area so i think that you know from from my standpoint is just helping you along there giving you some thoughts from time to time and maybe reining you in on some of your ambitions. But, you know, ultimately, at the end of the day, I think we're both aligned to the opportunity. 
working with uh, young people who otherwise may have went to prison, uh, who are getting some real skills, but also building up amazing relationships with the uh, the staff and the team here and others that have been in prison as they work their way back into the community this is open gates has been been amazing it's actually a really good secret if you like in in Postle park in, in mary hill and spring because a lot of people don't know it exists which i think shows shows the success because sometimes no news is good news with things like this but i think open gates are at a position now where you should be shouting about your story and, and telling your story because it's been amazing. I know you've got great plans coming up, so I can't believe how far Open Gates have came from six, seven years ago when I first met a, a much younger Pat Clark uh, with huge ambitions, and you've done so well uh, so far. This room, this is a research room. No, we, we, we see, like, see, I get four quid for that, right? Mm -hmm. If you look it up, it was a Second World War bomber pilot. He got it in 1962 when he retired. His name was Jock Kerr. He was a, one of the bouncing bomb pilots. He was one of the the, 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 the crew. He looks it up, prints it out. Suddenly, it's no two or three quid, it's 40, 50 quid. Uh, first edition books. We tell him how to, to, to recognise a first edition book in 1896. Is it worth a pound? Is it worth a hundred pound? Look it up, print it out, and we sell them. And the thing is, if we can get one or two boys or girls interested in that, I will take them to the auctions. And it gives them a new uh, ambition. Yep. I think something kind of resonated with me. Um, and I think from that first uh, meeting, I was I was thinking, I quite like, I quite like what's happening here. I kind of kind of, I kind of, I kind of got a good kind of positive vibe. Um, and I came down a few more times to help out kind of plan the courses. Um, and just through kind of talking to yourself, um, I think I remember saying to you one time, I can see me coming down here myself, like just some my mind back and helping out. And I was kind of asking you, like, do you need to help with anything? Do you need a hand raise? Do you need any volunteers? You did, yeah. <laughs> and that kind of got me thinking, maybe I should actually be helping out down here. Um, I've done a few different volunteer jobs over the last couple of years. I'm like, I, I want to volunteer here. Um, and just since then, obviously, I've been helping you out with... Um, some applying for some grants and some yeah. different funds. I, I really thank God for, for the, the for the the board that I've got. People have been made for, made made for the beginning, believed that what the vision that I've had for this. And without them, everybody doing this, this would never have happened. When I came in here, you know, like say um, ten year ago, I seen this for what it is just now. I didn't see it like hundred and twenty ton of rubbish lying on this floor having to clear it out. I didn't see that. But they did. But I had a different eyes to see it. And it's now it's sitting here. I was never so excited about that vision ten year ago. And now that we've got to this this um this point now, I'm more excited about the next five years. Because the last ten years, and to quote Simon Brennan, uh, it's uh, baby steps. We have got a, a seminar room, an IT room, a cafeteria, a kitchen, we've got a, a paint room, we've got a, a restoration room, we've got a workshop, we've got a, a, a granny grove with antique furniture. The problem we don't have now is we don't have enough manpower because we're still run by about 70% by ex-community payback boys come back and volunteers for us, amongst our other volunteers. So the next five years, I say I'm so excited because I think if we can push on for here, I'd like to get some full-time employees from our ex-community paybacks. And there's a reason for that as well because I have worked with guys in here when they, they come to me in a community payback or a national top end, like a life, my man serving life. I sell them the vision that I'm talking about just now, that there's something to be done in here. There's, there's, a, there's a tons of work to be done and get them interested. Job satisfaction is second to none. But the ones that really do this run is the boys that um, who have done their sentence and done their hours and then come back and volunteer. I mean, I've got four of them, five of them, who have been raised for three or four years. I want to employ these guys. But the, the new plans, I've got the new five-year plans, it'd be too much to get into the new. I'm more excited about that than I'm more about anything else. Um, one of the things about is training. I'm really desperate to get into training in here. We've got between five and seven uh, community paybacks every day. We've got one long-term prisoner in every day. I want to take that up to 20 community paybacks every day. So if I've got five or six staff, they'll be able to look after them. So, and the thing about that is, um, it's a training I want to get into more than anything else. We are solely a charity who takes in uh, offenders. 
But I want to open it up to everybody. We have also taken mental health. We take in schoolboys that seem to be a wee bit of a problem in school. I go to schools and talk about, you know, getting into trouble and stuff. But it's the training aspect in here. We've already done courses for scaffolding, for uh, restoration of furniture, uh, furniture restoration, health and safety, health and hygiene. We've also done a couple of other courses, certificate scaffolding. We've done them. But I want that to be an everyday thing. The wee old day courses. The end of the community centre, uh, the community payback uh, centres in Glasgow can come here and say, we'll get three boys and need a course. Because we've come to an agreement that part and parcel of them seven are ours. They can do a course. And while they're here, there's, we'll show them the seven or eight projects. And if I think we can help them, mate, that's what we'll do. The story of Open Gates is, is, um, is interesting uh, because it reflects to some extent the story of the wider community in Postle Park. Um, you're dealing with some people who maybe have a bad name. Well, this part of the city used to have a bad name. It's a part of the city that was abandoned in large part. A lot of these people that you're dealing with were abandoned in large part. So there's a great resonance between the, the, the community and the particular project. And there's a resonance also in bringing things back to life. The idea of this, what used to be a bakery, having a bakery once again, is it's not just symbolic of, of you know somebody using space. It's symbolic of the need for an area to come back to life. But I think it's brilliant, given that we are sitting in the old Pars Bakery yeah. uh, from, from many years ago, mm -hmm. that it's a nod to the kind of industrial history yeah. of the yeah. local area yeah. in a really meaningful way. If we actually yeah. would use this resource to, yeah. to feed the community as well with a... Uh, fresh products and at the same time more importantly actually is to upskill young people and give them confidence and, and education and training to get out there and, and, and get and secure employment going, going forward. A wee, a wee nod to the past is not a bad thing That's because people think of this part of North Glasgow as being an area with low income and, and low employment. It's got a hugely proud history, hu huge industrial history, and it's good to remind people of that. Yeah. The North's time has come, and it's important that Open Gates uh, are part of that redevelopment and are part of that rebirth of the area, because you're already here, uh, and you've actually got a really good foothold and some of the plans that you've got, some of the ambitious plans that you've got, uh, actually fit very, very well with not just the strategy of redevelopment, but actually the kind of community that people who are coming here are actually going to want to see. So I've got the wee potential gangsters in here. I've got fatherless young men in here. And honestly, we're just trying to just show them what to do. Give them a purpose. Give them a hope and give them a, hey, you're worth more than us. We've just got a young guy come in here and he's just been released from the jail. He's ways before he's back in again. I want to employ this boy. This boy's got so much potential. Anyway, that's just to give you a wee rough idea of what we do in here. If we get funding for these six for a couple of years, within a couple of years, we'll be self-sufficient. As I say, the plans we've got, I've got a five-year plan. We want to extend and, uh, what we do. I want to get into garden furniture. I want to get into car parts. I want to do a hundred things so that we can keep our men and their lassies. Um, and it ordains. I can look around here and see all the different men and women who've done very part of this factory. So I thank God for that.